stage is set, the place is alive. We're looking forward to Super Red 20, and I am in the home of none other than the chairman of Caribbean Prestige Foundation, Mr. William Monroe. Energy in the city again. Keep it locked. Vibrant lip color for that alluring, striking look. Strong gold eyeshadows to entice and enchant. Natural looking second skin foundation for a truly exotic style. Intense, bold, exotic. Sasha, makeup for exotic skin. Calabash Entertainment and Promotions, the one-stop shop for entertainment. Television host, radio presenter, event manager, artist manager, public relations manager, protocol officer. Contact Calabash Entertainment and Promotions now, 756-3549 or email calabash at gmail.com. Follow me on Twitter, Calabash N. Join my fan page on Facebook, Down to Earth with Wendy or Calabash Entertainment and Promotions. Calabash Entertainment, the one-stop shop for all your entertainment needs. Welcome, welcome. Um, we're in the middle of the carnival season, and carnival will be nothing without who I'm about to speak to. He has made an extensive contribution to the art form, soca, and more so this year, Calypso. I'm speaking to none other than the chairman of Caribbean Prestige Foundation, Mr. William Monroe. Hello. Good evening, sir. Pleasant evening. How are you? Not bad, just relaxing. You relax, you're good? Yeah. Right. Mr. Monroe, before we get into Soka Monarch and where it is now, let's talk about where it came from. Tell me a bit about where you came from, because I understand you're Trinidadian dual nationality. I was born in Grenada. Born in Grenada. Yes. And where did the Soka root come from? Where did you start Soka? No, that started in this house, you know. In this house? Yes. So tell me about your life in Grenada before you came to Trinidad. Oh. But that's a long story. I want to say my parents, my mother and father married. They had um, 15 children, you know, 10 boys, 5 girls. Big family. Right. And then I migrated, came to Trinidad at the age of 16. Oh, okay. You know? So you practically because grew up in Trinidad. Yeah, I had my brothers and they here to assist me when I came. And they was all um, builders and contractors and so on, things like that. Okay. You know? So basically that was what my big brother was doing and um, he teach me you know mm -hmm. and um, I was able to learn from him and I, at least I was good at my trade. I, so you I were a contractor? It. Yes I started okay. as a laborer. Okay. Then I went to a mason and then I went to a builder you know and things like that. But um, my vision was always to be a businessman Right. you know and that is that is a fact from small then. Right. You know? And what are some of the challenges you faced along the way? Well, the challenge, I didn't face no heavy challenges. Mm -hmm. I mean, because what happened, I wanted to achieve. So, as I mentioned, I came to Trinidad approximately 16 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I work, I learned, and um, I save all my money there. Saving was a yes, thing. Yes, saving was one of the things mm -hmm. I left to do. I didn't even want to go to town with okay. a taxi. I took the bus, you know? So you because save. the taxi at the time was 10 cents and the bus was 5 cents. And so that's a long time ago. Yeah. Right. And um, as soon as I was able to improve on my financial position, I bought a bicycle. Mm -hmm. So then I didn't have to take the bus again. Right. So I was saving that. So I was riding all to Digo Martin all the way. We have mm -hmm. our job. And in those days, the tree speed and all kind of things. Yes. Right, yeah, the tree speed and so. But I had um, no girlfriend and thing like that this time. It was the first time, as you asked me, I'm going to my life. Mm -hmm. For the first time, I, I, I kissed a lady. I was 22 going into 23 because I wanted to save. You were focused. Yes. And, and, and women that are distraction. Important. Well, I am not saying that they're <laughs> distraction, but I really wanted to achieve. And on the work I was working, I started um, 
lending money on the jobs to the people who fed them during the week and okay. on Monday morning they had no, no money. money. They used to lend them money and in a short space of time that had developed very massively. So within a, like a five years period in that, I um, had about four or five individuals with me working to collect money. Because so it spread. A money lender. Well, I call myself a financial consultant. Consultant, right? Okay. You know, so I because in those days the money lenders used to have a lot of gold chain and gold right. teeth and all kind of thing, mm -hmm. and I really didn't like that. Okay. But I started lending money in the government furniture shop that is next to the ready mix. At the time, Dr. Mm -hmm. Keith Rowley's mother was working okay. at the ready mix. Then next door to the ready mix, that was the government furniture shop. I was also lending money there. And I was lending money to the library, the public library. At the mm -hmm. time, Mr. Kummer was the librarian. And all the workers used to borrow the money there. Also the city hall, the people used to borrow. At the time, it was Telco. Yes. I started lending money to all the Telco. Then the Wasa, of course. I went to the whole of Wasa. And it was enormous. It, it had spread, you know? And, um, but at those days, people were very honest. They pay your money, you know? Now and then you'll get somebody that didn't want to pay. But eventually, when they started introducing salaries going to the bank, mm -hmm. I knew it would have been a problem. Okay. So I started diversifying. Mm -hmm. And at the time, as I say now, after around 26, I married at 26. Okay. I built a house before, mm -hmm. and I married at 26. And I said she was a designer. And um, that lady is my wife, first wife, my wife. That was Pat Bishop. Pat Bishop, mother, and my wife, father, is brothers and sisters. So Pat a, Bishop was your first wife? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I'm saying Pat Bishop, uh -huh. mother, mm -hmm. and my first wife. Right. Father was brother and sister, okay. I don't know how you call that. Related. So yes, he was at a close mm -hmm. re relationship. And Pat always got a lot of knowledge and assistance from Pat. And she had liked my vision, too, you know, as a visionary. And you know, she's an artist. You know? Yes. A, a very good one, too. So, it just continued like that. And when I saw what was happening, and I feel people have started kind of hiding mm -hmm. to pay now. Mm -hmm. When they go to the bank, say they didn't get paid anything. I started to get involved in the boutique business. Okay. Mm -hmm. So because how old were you by my, this time? Well, just now I'll tell you that. All right. My wife, <laughs> my wife was a designer. And it's the same Pat Bishop mother. You know, she was one of the greatest designers mm -hmm. that passed through Trinidad. Her name was Ina Bishop. And um, I think she put her the most JC screen ever yes. and win. I think she had one second and all the rest was victory. And um, I married at 26, as I tell you. And um, I started the boutique in 90 Frederick Street. You know, it was upstairs, Royal Castle. Okay. When I say opposite Royal Castle then, mm -hmm. it was 90 Frederick Street. I started out something upstairs and used to come downstairs and have little handbills and you know, inviting the people to come up and mm -hmm. say, welcome, welcome to the cabin in disguise, the most exclusive boutique, you know, most expensive, most exclusive, not expensive. Okay. You know, and the people used to come up and so. And then I opened another one in Henry Street, you know, and then after that, I opened another one down Frederick Street, 60 Frederick Street, you know, and um, I was renting there. Right. And I went on to purchase the building that's at 60 Frederick Street, Street, you know. And, um, but I'd always liked property. That's one of my ambitions because I believe if you have property, you have, right, you have mm -hmm. wealth. And then I started a drive in trying to own property. So then I bought 111 Henry Street from Hinking. Okay. Then I bought 115 Henry Street from Joseph Charles. Then about 150, no, 113 Henry Street from Joseph Charles, and then 115 Henry Street from Fernandez, then 117 Henry Street from Fernandez too, and then I was able to break down that whole four buildings there, 
and that is where I was able to build spectacular. But it was not spectacular, it was Kingdom of the Wizards. Okay. And then when I'd lease it to the Martino brothers, they call it spectacular. spectacular. But I went on doing a lot of then I bought sixty Frederick Street. I mean sixty then I bought sixty two Frederick Street and it's keep buying those things. But I don't want to go into all of the buying mm -hmm. and buying. But mm -hmm. I think eventually I did well. I mean I, I, I go into a good businessman and I feel that I wanted to do something nice for Calypso because when I look at how the Calypsoans were treated and how they used to go on the, the stage mm -hmm. from work then and I didn't like the dress code I think. Right, okay. And I always say, um I don't know why Sparrow and them didn't fight to achieve more then. And I start to see if I could have developed the Calypso. You know? And um I think I did well. I, 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 I'm one of the person could safely say responsible for the success of Shadow. I'm also one of the persons responsible for the success of Black Stalin. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of his great tunes, I think you know, is um, the early, the first album from Stalin, that was um, The Caribbean Man. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. That was my production. If you look at it, you will see, you will see Kingdom of the Wizards oh, okay. production from Right. And I also went in like merchant. I did a lot of work with merchant trying to help them. So I did a lot in the Calypso, a lot of recording and help them. And as I tell you, I build a spectacular place and tell them how they're supposed to dress and if they for, try to do the things in the presentation. Mm -hmm. If you want the world to accept, to accept you, you have to present, present yourself, yourself properly. properly, you know? And um, to be honest, around Early 80s, in the 80s, mm -hmm. I um, had a problem. And um, the problem is I, I, I went into receivership. When I say receivership, I, I, I lost everything. Yeah, and those days I was driving, I was in a case where I was driving a Rolls Royce and, you know, and all those things. And um, I went up to the fires, you know, to shop because I, I wanted to, at the time, I, I always admire Ram Kapalani. Oh, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. maritime corner there. That mm -hmm. whole thing was Ram Kapalani corner. You say Ram Kapalani, Ram the Ram Kapalani. Right, and I say I wanted to be a small Ram to see if I could have get as huge as him there. And I call in my accountant and civil money. We have a lot of value, a lot of business, and so on and so on. We went to the fires. I took a lot of money up to the fires. And um, when I came back, I got very good buy. I went to Japan, I went to Hong Kong, I went to China, I went to Taiwan, I went to Korea, you know, did a lot of shopping. And when I came back, I opened a, got a big, massive warehouse in Mova, you know? So how's it good? Because I had about, about 90 containers coming in, you know, 40 containers, whatever. And, um, when it came in, in um, Mova, because just before I left, I borrowed $5 million to make up the monies that I wanted to travel Start a new with. investment. No, what I wanted to travel, the amount of money I wanted to travel with. Yeah. Right. So when I came back and I got this big warehouse in Mova with all my goods when it came, I didn't ensure that building with all my goods and that went at the same time was the biggest recession that came into Trinidad and that whole thing went up in flame. Oh my. So Mr. Monroe, we're going to continue. We're going to take a break. We're going to be right back. That was the beat of the bamboo. 